Hello friends, welcome back. In this session, we are going to learn something called as Java Native Interface. We are going to have a series of sessions followed by this on this particular topic and I'm going to make a playlist for you and this is such an interesting topic. What is JNA will be introduced in this session, the prerequisites, the must know things, all this will be covered in the session and we will have our first program running with JNA as the base in the next session. We'll have a series of contents which is definitely going to excite you, I believe. And let's learn what is JNA. The JNA is a simple framework which will help in Java code calling or to be called by any native applications. My Java code is running in JVM. So I have a necessity to call native applications which are written in C, C++ or even assembly language. I need to call them. So for that to be done, I need a framework and that framework is nothing but JNI. It helps you in calling the native applications which are written in C, C++ assembly language or it can be specific to hardware or operating system platform. So there is a facilitator who is called as JNI. That is what we are going to discuss and we are learning that right now. Making it very simple, it enables the interaction between the Java application and the native code. You need a mediator, you need a facilitator and that facilitator is none other than the Java native interface and it enables the interaction easier. Well, what is JNI is explained. Now, why do we need JNI? There are some conditions which are related to hardware. We need to handle some hardware. So for that, I may have to go with that harder specific piece of code that's written in native language and performance improvement for a very demanding process. At times this is cited and most importantly, an existing library which we want to reuse instead of reinventing the wheel, rewriting the whole stuff in Java again. You've got something very fine already available as a library. Why cannot we go ahead and use it? That's what we are going to do with JNA. And remember a point, to achieve this, the JDK introduces a bridge. The bridge is nothing but the Java native interface. It is the bridge between the byte code running in our JVM and the native code. Now, the bridge is nothing but JNA, I clarified it. What is the byte code is the next question that I need to tell you. Can we understand that a little bit? Yes. Byte code can be defined as an intermediate code which is generated by the compiler after the compilation of the Java program, which is nothing but your source code. I repeat, it is the intermediate code which is generated by the compiler after the compilation of your Java program. The intermediate code makes Java a platform independent language and that's called as byte code. I define byte code. You know what is JVM already. Now JNA is also clearly explained. I hope it is very clear. Well, the next step that we need to go in into is the native methods. Normally, when you are making when you are building a native executable program which means in C or C++ or any such stuff we can choose it to be static or shared libraries remember it they can be static or shared libraries what is the difference the static libraries will have a different approach when you compare it to the shared libraries in the static libraries all the library binaries will be included as part and package of the executable during the linking process. Remember, all the library binaries will be included as a package. So you would not need that libraries anymore, but literally it will increase the size of the executable file and it will be .lib, .a, like that. And when you come to the shared libs, the second option, the final executable will have only references. It is, it is having only link to the library files. So not the code. You are not going to package it all together. The content is not jam packed there. It is only the link which comes into the picture. It requests that the environment in which we are running our executable file has to access all the files of the libraries used by our program. You are going to only give the link and not all the contents all together. That's what I have conveyed there. The later is what is most important for us. And I mean, the second approach is what is most important to us. And it makes a lot of sense for JNI as we cannot mix the byte code and natively compile code into the same binary file. So I cannot have both of them together and I cannot mix it. So it is better to follow the shared library approach where it is going to have the references only to the library and makes a lot of sense. So our shared library will keep the native code separately within its .dll, .s4, .dv file. Based on what operating system you are using, the extension could be decided. And this is the approach that we follow instead of all the content being part of our class. So I hope you understand what I'm trying to convey. You have two approaches. One is static library, another one is shared library. The shared library approach is what the one that we prefer with JNI. And the Java provides native keyword, which is used to indicate that 
the method implementation will be provided by a native code this is an intimation i give an intimation saying that yeah the method implementation will be provided by the native code the native keyword actually transforms the method into an abstract method into a sort of abstract method the main difference is that instead of being implemented by another java class it is implemented separately by the native shared library so we are intimating all these things very clearly the implementation is not as another java class instead it is a separate native shared library which is available somewhere else a table with pointers in memory to the implementation of all the native methods will be constructed so that they can be properly called by our java code the java code needs to know the addresses right so we have a table which has got all the point information so that the calling can be perfect i hope you understand the complete structure here now what are all the components needed java code native code jna header file c r c++ compiler as you require the java code is nothing but your classes they will include at least one native method remember it a native code is the actual logic actual code of our native methods which is nothing but in c r c++ return completely the jna header file this is the header file for c and c++ file whichever you are going to write as native file that needs to include the jna.h header file appropriately and we will talk about it more and i will also show you a demo on this this shows the importance of having a header file which is jna.h and now c and c++ compiler you can choose the compiler as per your convenience and choice and it can go between like gcc clang visual studio or any other one which is actually suiting our requirement so naturally we will go with gcc because it is very comfortable for our case you can choose others also now the jna elements from the java side we need to have the native keyword in the function i have already explained that we have got two methods available here you can use either of them like system.load library with string lib name or system.load with string upset in the first case you will just give the lib name uh, i mean the file name and the second case you need to go at the absolute path so this is very important for you well what are all the jna elements when it comes to c or c++ side we have got jna export jna call jna env j java vm and all these are very important for you so the jna export marks the function into the shared lib as exportable so that it will be included in the function table so remember it and thus the jna can find it jna call is combined with jna export so it goes hand in hand with jna export and it ensures that our methods are available for jna framework it it makes sure that it is available the jna env is a structure that contains the methods that you can use in your native code to access java elements java vm it is a structure that lets us manipulate a running jvm or even you can start a new one adding threads to it or destroying it etc and all of these are very clearly defined in the header file that i already cited jna.h and it is to be included in the c and c++ code so overall in this session i have given given you a clear picture as in what is jna what are all the jna elements for c c++ jna elements for java what are all the components needed what are all the native methods why jna most importantly all these are covered i hope it was useful and in case you have any questions please go ahead and type it in the comment section i'll be very happy to take it up Thank you very much for following the channel and the content. If you like the channel, kindly subscribe. Thank you.